untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a deck titled One Drop Red, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. It's an aggro deck featuring all one drop creatures, and even our non creature spells we can usually cast for one mana, thanks to the discount from Wizards Lightning and Spectacle, letting us cast Skewer and Line Up the Stage for one mana as well. And the deck only plays 16 lands, so our deck is very action packed, as we'll be able to draw a ton of spells and are less likely to flood out. And one card in particular I want to highlight is Wayward Guide Beast, a 2-2 with Trample and Haste, and when Guide Beast deals combat damage to a player, we return a land we control to its owner's hand. Normally this would be a drawback, having to pick up lands again, but in this deck where we only have 16 lands, it can actually be a huge upside, since we might get stuck on just 2 lands, and then we can play some stuff main phase, attack with the Guide Beast, pick up a land again, and since we haven't played land for the turn, replay that mountain, and then still cast something for 1 mana, so the Guide Beast in a weird way actually gives us access to more mana in the mid to late game, which is a huge upside. Then going over some of the other cards in the deck, we'll start with our creatures, where we have the full playset of Beaumont Courier, 1-1 one, one with haste, that whenever it attacks, exiles the top card of our library face down, and for one mana we can discard our hand and sacrifice a courier to put all the exiled cards in our hand, so it can potentially provide quite a bit of card advantage, which is why we need to try and attack with a Beaumont Courier as early as possible to get as many cards as we can. Then we also have Fanatical Firebrand, which we also don't mind playing on turn 1, as a 1-1 one, one with haste, we can also tap and sacrifice it to deal 1 damage to any target, so it can potentially take out opposing 1-drops like Lenor Elves. And then Soulscar Mage, another 1-drop we don't mind playing early on, as a 1-2 Wizard with Prowess, so it gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn whenever we cast a non-creature spell, and if a source we control would deal non-combat damage to a creature an opponent controls, we can put that many minus 1 minus 1 counters on that creature instead, so if we're up against a green deck where they've got some large creatures, we can still potentially shrink them down with our burn spells, so we can attack past them. Then other creatures we have in the deck at 1 mana that we usually don't want to play on turn 1 include a Rigging Runner, a 1-1 one, one first strike with a raid saying the Rigging Runner enters the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it if we've attacked this turn, so this is a great turn 2 play after we've attacked. And then we've got Gitu Lava Runner, a 1-2 wizard that gets plus 1 plus 2 and haste as long as we have 2 or more instant and or sorcery cards in our graveyard, so that's also the reason why we typically don't want to play Lava Runner on turn 1, because later in the game we'll easily have those 2 instants and sorceries in the graveyard to attack right away with a hasty lava runner. And then of course we've got our Wayward Guide Beast, which we typically also don't want to play on turn 1, and if we do, typically don't want to attack with it right away, since we want to have access to 2 mana on turn 2, so we can more efficiently double spell. And then going over some of the non-creature spells in the deck, we've got Build to Smash as the only pump spell in the deck, giving target attacking creature plus 3 plus 3 until end of turn, and if it's an artifact creature it also gains Trample until end of turn, which can be relevant with Beaumont Courier. We've got a full playset of Shock to deal 2 damage to any target, and then we've got some Spectacle cards with Light of the Stage, which only costs 1 mana for opponent lost life this turn, and then we get to exile the top 2 cards of our library, and until the end of our next turn we can play those cards, typically want to play Light of the Stage before playing playing our land for the turn in case we exile two lands with it, and then Skewer the Critics, another spectacle card that deals three damage to any target at sorcery speed, and Wizards Lightning, alongside our eight wizards in the main deck, to deal three damage to any target, and only cost one mana as long as we control a wizard, and then 16 basic mountains. The other card I was close to adding to the deck was Grim Lava Mancer, as another powerful one-drop wizard to discount our Wizards Lightning, and also gives us a nice mana sink to maybe burn out the opponent, since our deck tends to put a lot of stuff in the graveyard, but the activated ability can be a little bit slow, and since we have such a low land count, it can actually be tricky to activate the Lava Mancer turn after turn. And then I should also mention our companion, Obosh the Prey Piercer, which we're very rarely going to play in this deck since it's 3 mana to put in our hands and then 5 mana to cast it, which is going to be difficult in a 16 land deck, but every now and then the opponent might settle the wreckage us, giving us more lands and then we can make use of Obosh, or we're playing against a discard deck and just putting Obosh into our hand can maybe save us a bit of Croxna damage, so it's usually worth it, although you do give the opponent a little bit more information about which deck you're playing, which can be important during mulligan decisions. So that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. If we can connect with our Bowman career and line up a stage, we'll be able to find more lanes. Turn one which is often. Alright, hopefully no Cauldron Familiar to go with it. Although if we do find a second land, we can still attack into the Cauldron Familiar 
and then trample over it with build to smash and then line up a stage afterwards. Fatal push kills courier. I found a second land. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll guide beast attack and then line with the stage. Alright, so next round we can play Mountain before it goes away. Shock and deal with a Scrap Heap Scrouncher. I guess this is even better. We can Guide Beast attack with both. And then we only have to pick up one land. Scrap Heap can block. And then... Could shock the opponent's face, since killing Scrounger means they can just sack it to the oven. And I'm fine racing the opponent here. So, four mana, take three. And another oven, that's fine. And it looks like they have an upkeep effect, maybe. Alright, so how about we play Firebrand attack? Could also play Mountain double build to smash, but then I have to pick up all my lands. Yeah, Firebrand attack with all three seems fine. And then maybe light up the stage second main. Keep build to smash for next turn. Since they might have another fatal push in hand. So this is definitely a situation where we wouldn't mind getting a few extra lands in play to leverage light of the stage. But we're still doing okay, opponent's already down to 6. And we still have plenty of action in hand. Might struggle to cast Wizard's Lightning unless we draw a 1 mana wizard. And my opponent explodes, so yeah. Wayward Guide Beast doing some good work here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Turn 1 Bowman Courier. Light the stage on turn two, hopefully, so we can maybe find a second land. Our deck really likes to hit its second land drop, but usually doesn't need many more than that. Opponent on blue red and a wayward guide beast to draw. So yeah, we could guide beast and then pick up our land light the stage, although if we exile two lands we won't be able to play them. I think it's still worth it. Alright, and next turn we'll be able to play Mountain. Play a double Firebrand, maybe. I guess we won't be able to Wizard's Lightning unless we draw Soulscar Mage or Lava Runner. So, opponent on Grixis, control maybe. And taps out for a search for Ascanta. Ooh, Soulscar Mage to draw, perfect. So we can make use of our Wizard's Lightning. I was forced to do it now because otherwise Lightning would go away from uh, the line of the stage. Otherwise, keeping the Wizard's Lightning to maybe pump Soulscar Mage in response to a sweeper like Cry of the Carnarium could have been worth it. So that's the card we don't want to see. Cry, Sweltering Suns. So if they don't have one of those, we're looking quite good. Opponent's gonna kill Bowman Courier, which threatens to draw a ton of cards, but our hand is still action-packed, so we don't really mind. And is our opponent dead? If I Whistler Sliding Shock, that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, they're just dead here. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. We'll probably have to play Lava Runner on turn 1 and then turn 2 double rigging runner. Alright, never mind, can play Soulscar Mage. And then save maybe a hasty Lava Runner for later. 
opponent with Evolving Wilds Plains and a Swamp. Alright, hopefully no Sweeper. Oath of Kaya is pretty good. It's gonna take out Soulscar Mage and gain 3. And there's another Rigging Runner. So yeah, I guess I have the option of going Lava Runner, Wizard Slining, Skewer, give it haste, and then attack for another 6. Or I could play an extra Rigging Runner. Not sure if I should save my burn spells for any opposing creatures or not. Opponent could have a Wrath of God. So there's a lot to consider here. I think I do go for the aggressive line. Sir points at 10. And hope they don't have a Wrath of God. Shatter the sky. It's pretty much the same. Well, this might be a game where we actually cast a Bosch. Strangely enough. Probably worth it to play Rigging Runner to maybe enable Spectacle for future draws. Yeah, drawing four lands, typically more than we would like. So that's part of the problem here. Well, I guess we can play a Bosch after all. And then Rigging Runner can attack into the Knights. Put on carefully reading a Bosch. So they take two. But don't love my position if they have removal for a Bosch. We're pretty far behind. So this attack implies a second Oath of Kaya. Or I guess they were just gonna wipe the board anyway. We'll hang on to Shock. So need six more points of burn. Hidden stockpile, interesting. So it's going to enable revolts because one of the histories left the battlefield. All right, need just a little bit more burn here. Another wizard's lightning could do it. I don't think killing the creatures is the way to go. Opponent's going to be digging for more life gain. Well, Wizard's Lightning now since it's pretty expensive, but keep the shock to enable Spectacle. Alright, and there we go. And our opponent explodes. Wow, what an interesting game. Ended up casting a Bosch and still managed to burn our opponent out. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Firebrand to enable Spectacle and hopefully find some more creatures. Well, let's see what we're up against. Swamp and a Stitcher Supplier. Alright. That's actually annoying since that can block my Firebrand. And having to waste a shock killing the supplier feels pretty bad. So... A red-black sacrifice, graveyard deck. I think I still shock here. So we can clear a path. And then I'll light up the stage. Alright, at least we didn't hit two lanes, which would have been bad. Turn two, opponent passes. So we'll just Beaumont Courier. Attack with both. And 
And Soulscar Mage enables Wizard's Lightning. Devil we can take out. Could have waited until my turn to get the Prowess trigger, but just want to be mana efficient since I might end up using Beaumont Courier, so I want to be able to empty my hand. And I think we're just going aggro here. So now I have the option of sacking Courier and drawing two cards essentially, which may or may not be worth it. Another Devil could be an issue. And a familiar. So, Devil means that if I sacrifice Courier, my opponent can deal one damage with the Devil. Ooh, build to smash, that's interesting. So I guess now we do attack with everyone, or do I keep the Firebrand back? I guess I could keep Firebrand back. Sacrificing Firebrand has the same issue with Mayhem Devil. I guess this can happen. Opponent's about to take it, so we'll build to smash. And then... Yeah, my opponent's just dead. Can deal one with the Firebrand. Alright. Close one here against Rakdo Sacrifice. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a very creature heavy hand. So, no ways to really enable Lava Runner or Soulscar Mage. So, definitely not a great hand, but I might keep based on the fact that Guide Beast can pick up our land to maybe still help us double spell on turn two. And then hopefully find a mountain or like a wizard's lightning. Alright, so now I probably don't guide beast just yet. And instead we can firebrand attack and rigging runner. And then next turn I can guide beast attack and then still play my author one drops. Alright, so now we kind of want to stop drawing the lands. Yeah, Guide Beast attack, sounds good. Don't necessarily want to trade Courier for Paradise Druid, but it's not the end of the world if it happens. Could also decide to hang on to the activated ability on Courier, in case they have a fight spell but I think I just empty my hand. Yervo. And a Gilded Goose. Another Courier. So is this a simple case of play land, play Courier attack with all, sacrifice Courier? Yeah, probably. Could also sack Courier now in the hopes of finding some burn spells, but I think we'll be able to just go wide. And if they block the bigger courier here, we can maybe draw into a 1 mana instant. To still enable prowess. Sacrifice this. Alright, so if I shock, this will trigger... How much damage is my opponent taking? 4, 5, 6, 7... 8, 9, 10, so I could put them to 1. I guess killing Paradise Root could be okay. I mean, I could just burn them and then next turn Skewer or Fanatical Firebrand is lethal if they don't sack the food for life. One potential problem card could be like a Great Henge gaining the opponent some life, but I think we can still beat it. Another Paradise Druids. So yeah, we can sacrifice Firebrand, which enables Spectacle, which enables Cure, so even if they gain three, they're still dead. All 
All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with, yeah, a totally fine hand. Turn one Soul Scar Mage, turn two, probably just play two more creatures out, and then build to Smash and Shock to enable Prowess. Hopefully, don't find too many more lands. And instead, maybe Beaumont Courier or Line Up the Stage to draw some more action. Opponent does have a turn one Goose. And a Guide Beast to draw. So, it is tempting to shock the Goose. Although I wouldn't be able to fully leverage my prowess triggers. So I think instead I'm still gonna... Soul Scar Mage attack. If they block, I'm happy to build to smash. And then just play more creatures out. Opponent takes it. Could have also played Guide Beast instead of Live Runner, which would have been reasonable. Especially if I want to shock and build to smash to give this the plus one plus so bonus next turn. I wouldn't be able to Guide Beast necessarily. Alright, so Breeding Pool maybe indicates the Neoform combo deck. Another Guide Beast. Um, yeah, I guess Guide Beast attack. And then keep a build to smash is fine. They're likely blocking the Lava Runner. Opponent takes it. Do I still build to smash anyway? I think I do. Or I can shock the Goose. Yeah, shocking the Goose also seems reasonable. And then we still get to play Guide Beast after picking up a land. Alright, points at 12. If they're a Neoform combo deck, we could die to the combo on turn 4. And if we draw another 1 mana spell here, we could potentially win next turn. Uro is going to gain them 3. Keeping the shock to maybe disrupt a Neoform combo also would have been an option. Although, who knows, maybe your opponent's just playing something entirely different. So right now, how much damage do we have? 8, 9, 10, 13. So very close, but not quite lethal. Alright, my opponent explodes anyway, so I guess they were into a combo deck and they couldn't recover from two life. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand is not ideal. Having Guide Beast as the only creature, but I think I still keep it and then I'm just not gonna attack with it on turn one. Alright, second Guide Beast actually makes the first Guide Beast a little bit better. And then I think I still don't attack and then next turn play Guide Beast attack, pick up one land and light with stage. Alright, ooze. We kind of want to kill, but I guess if they trade that's also fine. Because I don't want to be forced to play land main phase and then pick up two lands. But picking up one land is fine. Alright, and then Instead of line up the stage, I'll just shock the ooze now. Zero point on Gruul. Sadly, they have a spellbreaker, so... I guess double shock spellbreaker, pick up all my lands. Or I can not attack, or only attack with one guide beast. 
Points still at 16. I've got 6 points of burn in hand, I guess 7 with a firebrand. Thinking if I just want to start like pointing my burn spells at my opponent's face already, but it feels a bit early for that. So I can double shock attack with one guide beast, I think that's a fine middle ground. And killing the opponent's creatures also makes their synergies like Amber Cleave a lot worse. So it buys us a bit of time. Do they have a questing beast? They do. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty powerful curve. So attack if they block shock the questing beasts. And then we'll light up the stage. Alright, next turn I can play both one drops. Maybe try and get some card advantage going with Beaumont Courier. So, while our creatures are smaller, we have fewer lands, so. We're gonna draw more spells on average, which is what we need to try and leverage here. Alright, so how about empty my hand attack with everyone? I don't die to an Amber Cleave on the way back. They can kill the Bowman Courier with two cards underneath, but then they're taking a bit more damage and we still have another Bowman Courier. Yeah, I think that's fine. So, when I'm deciding if they want to prevent the card draw or the damage, falls to three. And we've got a good chance of killing them next turn. Alright, opponent's gonna turtle up here. So, play land, attack with courier, sacrifice it, and if we draw into burn spell, they're dead. Ooh, build to smash. Could be awkward. Alright, I mean, I guess a bush can also help us close out the game next turn since we've got 5 mana. Although, Amber Cleave could hurt. Do have the option of chomping with a Firebrand and sacrificing it. And yeah, that's a hasty spellbreaker indicating Amber Cleave. Let's say they cleave Bonecrusher Giants. That's 10 plus 10, 20 damage. So that's a no-no, because I would be chomping with Firebrand and sacking it, but of course Trample means that doesn't matter. So I guess if I do something like this, if they cleave the giants, that's still a Trample plus 715, so I wouldn't be dead. And then they're dead on the way back to Laugh Runner attack and one damage from Firebrand. And if the Amber Cleave the Goblin, we should still be fine. Alright. So Cleave the Giants. Oh, I guess my opponent has Hexproof. And that's fine, we can just... Uh, I guess damage whatever the Giant. And then Obosh means a Lava Runner is still lethal. Alright. Close game against Gruul. Forgot about the Hexproof from uh, Spellbreaker for a second, but uh, didn't end up mattering. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Definitely wouldn't mind a second land at some point, so being on the draw helps with that as well. Plenty of wizards to go with our lightning, save the runner for turn two. 
And a thought seize is gonna have a look. Our hand is pretty thought seize proof here. They might take Wizard's Lightning. But it also helps our Lava Runners get hastes a little bit sooner. So our opponent took Soulscar Mage. Have to play Lava Runner turn one. So they appear to be on Sultai. Which does have cards like Extinction Event, which can be effective at uh, dealing with all our one drops. Alright, hopefully find a second land next turn. So we can start unloading multiple spells per turn. Build to smash instead. So want to avoid playing out more creatures in case of extinction events. So I think we just attack and then wizard sliding face. Because if I build to smash and they have spot removal, that's worse for me. Right, they're gonna eliminate the rigging runner. So now do I still build to smash or wizard sliding? Build to smash is maybe a little bit more difficult to convert into 3 damage. And we still have plenty of wizards to make our lightning cheaper. Could have also just dealt one, played another lava runner, but if we draw land we can maybe burn our opponent's face and play hasty lava runner. Alright, Guide Beast is actually great here. Now my opponent could, I guess, cycle Shark Typhoon. What else could they have for 4 mana? A spot removal spell plus a Growth Spiral. So if I play Guide Beast attack, they can cycle Shark Typhoon and ambush my Lava Runner, which would be bad. So is this Guide Beast only attack with Guide Beast? I think so. Uh, they're gonna sabotage it. Fair enough. Do they also have a fatal push? They don't. Well, my points are 10 and I've got 8 points of burn in hand, so we'll see. Courier. Sure. So, wanna avoid facing an Uro here? Still no second land, but that's okay. And then we want a lightning before damage to grow the Lava Runner. Might get countered. Frilled Mystic, I see. Well, that explains their play, although they had basic Swamp in play when they shocked in the Overgrown Tomb. Well, they're at 5. And as soon as we find a second land, we can unload everything here. Still nothing. I guess attack with Lava Runner only. And Wizard's Lightning end of turn. Or Shock, maybe. Oh, they're gonna Heartless Act. So if I Wizard's Lightning, they could Frilled Mystic in response. I still have two Wizards, so I should be able to cast these for one mana. And if I Lightning now, I make them spend their mana end of my turn, and then they get to untap and have mana up again, so I feel like I should wait and just end of turn shock. Right, they cycle Triome. I guess that's fine. Could also shock the Mystic, so I can keep attacking with Courier. But going face seems fine too. Uh, gets negated. Still nothing. <laughs> Alright, Lava Runner, attack with Lava Runner. Or I can keep it back for cheaper Wizard's Lightning. Could attack with both, and then if they block Courier, they're taking two. Yeah, that's probably the play, actually.
opponent's gonna scry before deciding how to block. So yeah, if we can dodge Uro, we should be fine. Opponent trades. Still 15 lands and 42 draws remain. So I've got a decent chance of drawing a second land here. I guess we don't know how many lands we exiled with Beaumont Courier. Alright, so our opponent kept the card on top. Don't have any instants in hand anymore, so that makes it difficult to avoid counter spells. Probably just attack, hope they don't have Shark Typhoon and then I can maybe light up the stage. Ambusher instead. Yeah, that's annoying. Alright, I guess we'll just play a Lava Runner. Don't really want to sack Courier because my hand's good. And then we'll have a Wizard in play for Wizard's Lightning. If they don't draw Counter Spell and we draw Land, they're still dead. Still nothing. I guess we'll pass. And then now we'll lightning. Bottom, bottom. Take four. Shock the draw, so we'll pass and then burn end of turn. If they scry with castle, they don't, so they must have a counter spell in hand then. Can afford to take seven. And since both of my spells are lethal and I don't think my opponent has instant speed life gain, I th think I should lightning now instead of shock. In case they have removal for Lava Runner, then I can still shock for one mana next turn. Alright, center point finally explodes. Well, this was a bit of a weird game, stuck on one land the entire time, but I guess we made it work. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Even have the build to smash to go with our Bowman career potentially. So hopefully, Courier survives for a few turns. Guide Beast is interesting. I think I would rather Firebrand light up the stage, and then next turn, Guide Beast. Alright, might have to play those Wizards first. Aspirants. We can attack past pretty easily. So I guess Lava Runner, Soul Scar Mage, and then Shock. And then we're in prime position to leverage our Bowman Courier next turn. Ooh, Knight of Autumn destroying the Bowman Courier. Presumably. Nope, opponent just gains life. Don't really mind that as much. So... A guide Beasts. Attack with all. Could have also sacked Firebrand on the Knights, but they're pretty likely to block here and then we can build to smash. And is my opponent dead? Let's see, 3, plus 6, 9, 10, plus another 4, essentially 14, so they wouldn't quite have been dead. So I think I would have ended up um, just keeping up one mana for Beaumont Courier in case they ended up killing it somehow, which is probably better than firing off the Wizard's Lining if we get to draw 4. But yeah, we're pretty likely to then win next turn. So yeah, I mean, this Monorad's aggro deck has been performing quite well, I've been very impressed by it. 
guide beast definitely slots in nicely, giving us a 2-2 haste that uh, actually has mostly an upside in this deck as opposed to a drawback. So definitely give it a shot if you have most of these cards. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.